Receiving telephone orders is one of the most difficult thing a new foreigners will encounter when she starts working here in the United States. And this is mainly because we are not familiar with the most common medications that our typical patients would receive, especially if it was given to you via telephone order or verbal order. So to help with the transitions, here are the most common medications that you will definitely encounter when you start working here in the United States. So if you're interested, stay tuned and watch till then. I'm Nurse Juan de la Cruz, your OFW nurse. Disclaimer, I'm sure I'm gonna mispronounce some of the medications I'll be discussing. I think maybe 80% because of my accent, so please pardon me, okay? I will definitely uh, put a subtitle here of the medications that I'll be explaining. So please bear with me and do your own research. If I made a mistake, please comment below, okay? So let's start. Number one on the list is Tylenol. Tylenol or acetaminophen for generic name is the most number one common medication that is being given to the patients for pain. It is the most uh, lowest form of pain pill that we, uh, the doctors normally order for the patients. Also, this is also given for fever as well. Tylenol usually comes in two forms. Uh, normally, it's an oral form. Then another one is to the IV. Oral form usually comes from at like 325 milligram per tablet, but normally we're giving it like two tablets uh, every four to six hours as needed. Then for the IV, which is 1,000 milligram, it comes with a 100 ml small bag. Usually we give it every 15 minutes. Then for 24 hours, we're only allowed to give 3,000 milligram maximum. That's per day. Uh, you have to take note of this because sometimes if Tylenol or acetaminophen doesn't work, you have to give other medications that con normally contains Tylenol with it, like Percocet or Norco, those contain Tylenol. So you have to make sure that you are not going overboard within a 24-hour period. Tylenol is equivalent to paracetamol or paracetamol back in Philippines or in Singapore. Never have I given paracetamol here in the US. Uh, it's kind of like it's not existing here. Though I guess there is, but they rarely give it. And Tylenol sometimes comes in different like combination type of medications. And the most common type you can hear is like Tylenol 3 or Tylenol 4. Uh, means it has a combination of codeine in it. The only difference between Tylenol 3 and 4 is a dosage for codeine. Uh, normally, uh, they really rarely give it so they prefer other giving narcotics versus this one then number two Motrin. you will definitely hear this from your patients asking for this medication can i have Motrin? so at first i really thought that this medication was something to do with your gastric thing but it turns out it's a pain medication as well uh, Motrin or ibuprofen is the generic name for that so back home in the philippines or asia we normally call this advil so that's the common brand name that we have there uh, we do have here also like advil in the u.s but most of the people here in the u.s especially in kentucky they are more known as Motrin okay uh, per tablet usually comes like 200 tablet and usually we give like uh, 200 to 600 depending on the body weight if the patient is asking for Motrin and you want to call the doctor make sure to check the labs first particularly the bun and creatinine levels make sure it is within normal levels if it is abnormal then you have to mention that to the doctor because ibuprofen or Motrin is nephrotoxic so definitely he or she should know because most of the time doctors would sometimes won't even look at the computer or the system about the patient's history or labs so you have to make sure to take note of that because if not pharmacy will catch that and pharmacy will have to tell you that and sometimes you have to call the doctor or sometimes if the pharmacy is good pharmacy will be the one to call the doctor then number three toradol uh, toradol the generic name for this is actually ketorolac uh, at first i really thought toradol when i heard this over the phone i really thought about tramadol because it's kind of like sounds more like related or near or sounds alike uh, but it turns out it's ketorolac and normally those we're giving here is from 15 to 30 milligram every four to six hours normally through experience this is a drug of choice for patients who are not allowed to have narcotics so this is the main pain reliever they can have especially those with contracts with against narcotics when i say in contract those are the patients who are not allowed to have narcotics and are taking suboxone treatment so if you see these medications uh, they're having like in uh, usual medication they take suboxone so, so they are not allowed to take any narcotics i'll explain more about narcotics on the next video then number four zofran zofran is usually being given to patients if they are nauseated or vomiting this is the first line of medication that they normally give generic name for zofran is ondacetron 
normally we give 2 mg to 4 mg every 4 to 6 hours depending on uh, the doctors normally uh, rarely that we give this oral form because usually if they're nauseated or like in the midst of vomiting we don't give them anything through oral so most of the time you'll encounter this through an IV form this is normally like a second thing that you will find after Tylenol in most of your MAR or your patient's MAR, I mean. So this is really, really common. Then, number five, if Zofran is not effective, they usually give Phenergan. Phenergan, a uh, generic name for this is Promethazine. It is an anti-emetic and anti-histamine medication. So normally, it comes with like a tablet form, uh, 25 milligram per tablet or per dose. And usually, we're giving it like six hourly. It also comes in a different form, usually through an IV infusion. Like for us, pharmacy has to supply this medication because they have to mix it with a bag like 100 ml mixed with a 25 milligram IV dose of Phenergan. Why? Because uh, giving Phenergan like push can really burn your veins so definitely they're not giving this like IV push you have to give this like a mixing at least 50 to 100, 100 ml then also sometimes we give this through intramuscular but you have to give this deep IM okay another thing to take note about this medication is an antihistamine so it makes you sleepy so most of your patients will definitely ask for this especially at night uh, they will always say that it helps them sleep as well and honestly this is more effective than Zofran it does really help so if ever we have this medication and your patient is confused and agitated and he or she is not really nauseated, sometimes we give this. Especially if we don't have the on-call doctors like on standby or they are really busy, then we can give this for them. It does help them relax and normally they end up sleeping. So that is really a goal for you, especially for those patients who are demented or really agitated during the night shift. Next will be uh, melatonin. Um, melatonin is one of the most common first line of drug given to patients who are having difficulty of sleeping. Normally, we're giving those from 2 mg to 5 mg. But honestly, most patients take normally at home 10 mg. So like for me, I'm also taking this medication being a night shift nurse. So I really usually take this every few nights just in case I'm having trouble sleeping. It usually comes in oral tablets or sometimes gummies or chewables. So it really depends from hospital to hospital. Then I saw this in TikTok. If ever your kids was able to open the stash for your melatonin, the gummies one, and they took all of them, uh, don't worry. They won't really have an overdose for this. So you just have to relax and let them sleep and enjoy your night. Then, number seven, for those hardcore patients who are taking a lot of sleeping pills in the night, melatonin normally doesn't work for them. They will ask for something else. And the next common sleeping pill that we normally give here is Ambien. The generic name for this is Zolpidem. Normally, we're giving this 5 to 10 mg per night or every night as needed for insomnia. It is commonly given because it is not really that addictive as compared to the other more hardcore sleeping pills. So this is uh, the second uh, most common uh, sleeping tablet your doctor might order for your patient. Then, number eight, if your patient's uh, belly is hurting, normally they will ask for you if you have some thumbs. Yes, thumbs. So the first time I heard of this, I was like, really a little bit confused I wasn't really sure what thumbs meant so i had to call uh, some of my colleague or charge nurse and ask her what thumbs is it's actually calcium carbonate so in other words it's an antacid okay so as simple as that so it is normally given through oral and it's usually chewable so you can really buy this over the counter and even for me i usually take this some from time to time then another common medication for your gastric is called gas x so by the word itself is something to do with your gas so a generic name for this is simeticon so normally when the patient is feeling like bloated this is what they're gonna request from you and like for my previous hospital we don't even have to call the doctors for this kind of medications we have a list of medicines that we just can type in that is approved by our doctor particular those medications that are really simple like Tylenol uh, gas X or simeticon uh, Tums and uh, what else I think we can also give Zofran sometimes the IV form if they are not allergic then number 10, Lopresor. If your patient is having some ACIV or RVR above 130, normally this will be the drug of choice your doctor will order for this particular patient. Lopresor or genetic name is Metoprolol. Normally per vial it comes like 5mg per 5ml. Uh, usually it's given through 
IV push within 5 minutes or give it through 5 minutes. In some hospital, they would like it to be given within 1 minute period but most of the time I encounter this like 5 minutes. So low press or IV as PRN medications for heart rate is usually very very common. One thing to take note about this is to mention the patient's blood pressure particularly if it's low. So in a scenario where your patient's having uh, AFib with RVR, so you have to check the blood pressure and make sure it is okay. If it's lower than like 100 systolic blood pressure, then you have to mention that to the doctor. Because sometimes, like I said earlier, sometimes they won't even review the patient's chart. So you have to be proactive and tell them about this. Then, number 11, Lasix. If your patient is short of breath and when you listen to her lungs or his lungs, he sounded wet or crackling or feels like congested and for whatever reasons, normally if they had a blood transfusion or they have a rapid IV fluid infusions, then definitely Lasix is normally what a doctor will order for this particular patients. Meaning, they are congested, meaning you have to give them a diuretic to release some of the fluids from their lungs. So I'm guessing you're able to guess the generic name for this medication. Another name for Lasix is is furosemide. Yes, furosemide is a diuretic medication that we normally give for patients having a congestion. Normally, we give this 40 milligram IV push. Important thing to take note before you call the doctor about this, make sure to check the labs, particularly the ban and creatinine levels. Because if the ban and creatinine levels are elevated, usually the doctors are having like second thoughts on ordering these kind of med medicines. So you really have to mention and be proactive in telling them this. And normally, if the ban and creatinine levels are high, usually they just give a half dose, which is like 20 milligram. Or sometimes they will consult with someone with a specialty for nephrology. Then while you're at it, make sure to check the blood pressure as well. You have to make sure that the blood pressure is within the normal limits. If it's low, normally don't want to give this particularly if it's lower than 90 systolic blood pressure. So because this can lower your blood pressure as well. So the doctor has to take note about this as well. So better involve the doctor with this. And whenever you give this medication, make sure to be more cautious and monitoring the patient's blood pressure. So on the next video, we'll be discussing the narcotic PRN medication. Uh, I want to discuss this differently because it has more things to take note about and some precautions that you really want to know. And getting narcotics here in the United States is not like back home in the Philippines or in Singapore where there's a bigger precautions. Here you are on your own, it's your responsibility. So you have to know most of these medications and I'll be explaining it to you in our next video. Okay, so for now, this will be it for our PRN medication, the common ones. Uh, if I forget to mention some of the other common medications, please comment down below. Okay, so if you learned something from this video, please click the like button, subscribe, and share it to your friends. Again, I'm Nurse Juan de la Cruz, your OFW nurse. Thank you, God bless, bye bye, stay safe.